Here's something I'm going to tell you first off, and it should be easy even for a child to understand. We know what a tug of war is, right? What about like an arm wrestling contest, right? You got like two people trying to like pull each other over an arm wrestle. It's a struggle between two different things. There's two different uh, force modalities. One, well, one of them is not a force, excuse me, one of them is inertia and acceleration. Fundamentally, you only have force and motion and inertia and acceleration. The only reason the visible universe exists is due solely to magnetism. Now, magnetism is a dielectric field. This means the loss of inertia or potential, i.e. energy, of the dielectric manifests as this toroidal bubble. And this, of course, creates space. Time doesn't exist. Neither does space have any properties, which, by the way, is a direct quote from Nikola Tesla. So you have these two competing entities. Okay, by the way, something else most of you don't know, and this is an absolute, and this, of course, has been confirmed ages ago by Tesla, Faraday, Steinmetz, James Kirk, Maxwell, Oliver Heaviside, all the great gods of electrical theory, is that the smaller the space, the higher the capacitance. But anyway, we have these two competing uh, geometries, but they're, in, they're obviously intertwined, like yin and yang, two sides of the coin. There's no such thing as a head side of a coin or a tail side of a coin. Well, sure there is. No, there's not. There's just only the damn coin. Anyway, we have these two geometries. One is force and motion, one that gives actual visible uh, premise, uh, uh, a pretense for the universe. In other words, the universe only exists visibly or empirically due to magnetism. Atomic um, volume exists solely due to magnetism. Smaller the space, the higher the capacitance. Now, the competing, the other arm wrestler, if you will, and I'm trying to use very simple analogies, is, of course, the dielectric. This, of course, is increasing inertia and acceleration. This is a move towards counter space. And, of course, counter space, uh, Dollar has said this, and other people, like Olive Winchell, who wrote a book on uh, counter space, is really a, a, a bullshit, horrible way of actually saying uh, non-Cartesian, uh, ether, or literally, we, we, I don't care if uh, you say subspace or counter space or zero point energy. When it comes to Mother Nature, Mother Nature doesn't give a damn what stupid, pathetic, bipedal, dumb human beings call it. Who cares if you want to use zero point energy or zero, uh, uh, um, yeah, excuse me, counter space or zero point energy or non Cartesian or reality or the ether are all one and the same thing. But this is the inexplicable, excuse me, not inexplicable. Um, I meant to say undeniable, excuse me, uh, undeniable conjugate nature of the universe. Now, I was, for, uh, for relaxation, I was watching some of these brain-dead astronomers that were actually talking, for hours, I watched four different shows on black holes, not to learn something, but to watch how these mental midgets actually think. Now, these people, some of them are PhDs in physics, and of course, they're extremely brilliant when it comes to mathematics, but what... And this is a really fundamental point, and nobody that I know has ever mentioned this in a book or in any video, is that the hardcore astronomers, you know, that are working at Keck and the Arecibo, the, the people that are uh, analyzing data from the Hubble Space Telescope, none of these people know jack crap about field theory. What they are are mathematicians, and they're also empiricists. And they look at all this cosmic phenomena, and I was uh, watching them uh, talk uh, about researching uh, the uh, galactic uh, centers of many galaxies, the galactic wobble of some of the nearest stars around uh, the galaxy. So, well, if there's a black hole, supermassive black hole in the center of a galaxy, we'll notice this uh, skew of light. And turns out that every major galaxy has a supermassive black hole at the center of it, which is as it should be, the nave of the wheel, the ancient symbolism of the wheel where you actually have the hollow axle around everything. So, I mean, this symbol from macro to micro, of course, is undeniable. I mean, it is the incommensurability of the entire universe from the microscopic to the macrocosmic. And anyway, these, these people are unable to even to define, and Stephen Carruthers, who I actually love his videos a lot, he's... Uh, attacked the stupidity of Einstein and countless others that their math is absolutely, you know, insane and ludicrous because it is self-contradictory nonsense where everybody's trying to define a black hole. All of these people are, are often great mathematicians. Some of them are brilliant mathematicians and, uh, you know, they're highly acclaimed scientists, but none of them 
because everything is a field and you know fields are not particles and the only way you could actually explain you know there's no difference between an atom and you know a, a, a spiral arm galaxy or anything I mean everything is absolutely identical from the atomic to the galactic these are just mirror images of one another as the interplay between this conjugate geometry of force and motion and inertia and acceleration, specifically magnetism and the dielectric, which of course are one and the same thing. One is an expression of the other. Kind of like someone to stupidly think that water is one thing and ice is another thing, or steam is something else. And of course that's not the case, it's all water. Only a pathetic little idiot child would think that, yet we have these scientists that are unable to, they can't see the forest for the trees. They have no idea of anything when it comes to field theory. They're brilliant scientists, so to speak. They're not scientists in the true sense of the term, i.e. the Platonic and Aristotelian scientists who had a quest for truth and was, uh, had a multidisciplinary background as far as you had to know field theory, mathematics, a lot of different stuff to be able to put two and two together. You have to have a, be able to see the bigger picture. And I just just listening to all these uh, so-called brilliant and highly acclaimed uh, astronomers pontificate just complete and total atomic nonsense about what a black hole is. Of course, a black hole is not a hole, and it's certainly not black. Explaining a black hole is extremely simple. It is extremely simple. Now, human beings, we don't actually have... Uh, uh, a paradigm or an analogy for this on earth thank goodness of course we don't all matter has volume right this is how we conceive the universe just just think about that thought for a second all matter has volume right whether it be hydrogen or you can only compress hydrogen so far inside of a tank for example everything has volume hydrogen lithium plutonium everything it has volume and this of course is atomic mass and picometers and this, of course, is a homeostasis between the dielectric. And, of course, every atom is nothing other than an, uh, a tiny uh, atomic dynamo, uh, electrostatic generator. And, then, of course, at its core is the dynamo, is the nucleus, which is generating that energy. Um, but we actually can't conceive of matter that has no magnitude. Matter is equal to mass. You get enough matter, ultimately you have a mass. And that mass, of course is attribute is magnitude. Like one pound of copper is X magnitude, right? One pound of, uh, of hydrogen, for example, is, I forget how many square feet one pound of hydrogen translates into. It's rather huge. Um, I don't know what one pound of polymer would be, something like maybe five inches by five inches. So every mass has a magnitude. Going back to the tug-of-war analogy, where everything is a fight between force and motion and inertia and acceleration, to easily explain what a black hole is, and none of these so-called brilliant scientists or mathematicians have able, been able to, and it's very simple, Mother Nature is extremely simple, but it's not simplex, explaining what a black hole is, and I approach this from the premise of explaining it to a child. It's like, well, you know, what if you had two equally matched people, or mostly, you know, sit there, fight back and forth in a tug-of-war, or in this case, an arm wrestling contest, well, back and forth, right? They're kind of equally matched, right? And so what if you then take one person and replace them with this uh, steroid-popping, you know, muscle-bound uh, freak, you know, trying to arm wrestle me when I have no muscles. This is all fat right here. It's like, well, the little child would, of course, rightly and very quickly tell me that the muscle-bound uh, goon would immediately overthrow me in an arm wrestling contest. And this is exactly what a black hole is. What the hell are you talking about? Well, this is something we don't have an analogy for in our world or how human beings conceive things. And it is really, really, really simple. So simple, you're going to have an aha moment. If you have five brain cells, you'll have an aha moment. The only thing a black hole is, is where the dielectric in the case, a perfect analogy between the muscle-bound goon, has overthrown magnetism's ability to keep that matter within the visible cosmos. In other words, we have something, wait for it, that is incredibly, incredibly massive, which everybody is on the same page. A black hole is super massive. It's got uh, three billion solar masses. In other words, like a supermassive black hole. In uh, Andromeda Galaxy, I think has three billion uh, solar masses, which would be like three billion of our sun. Okay, but it, there's nothing there. Something that is super massive, mass, super massive, we're all on the same page, but which has absolutely no magnitude. Volume, 
So magnitude, volume. Well, how does this so? Smaller the space, the higher the capacitance. When a mass becomes so incredibly massive and then attains to coherency, a point source, just like a magnet, a magnet is point source. Laser light, well, this laser light is coherent. Attributionally, laser light is coherent, but what laser light is, is point source light. When you actually have this super, super huge mass, and then it attains to point source where the entire mass is working in geomagnetic precession, okay, just like a magnet. In other words, if you're actually able to pump up the power on a neodymium a trillion times, which none of us could ever do, and all the energy in the world couldn't do it, but if we could, that magnet would vanish from this world. Because what actually defines a magnet is inertia and acceleration. Everything that people call magnetic attraction is not mag... There's no such thing as magnetic attraction. That's dielectric acceleration. Magnetism is specifically force in motion, denotatively and connotatively. Everything that the idiot human beings for the past thousands and thousands of years have been calling magnetic attraction is dielectric acceleration. It is, of course, absolutely no different than what us idiot human beings call gravity. The only thing that differentiates out gravity from so-called and incorrectly magnetic attraction is coherency. Normal gravity is non-point source dielectric acceleration or incoherent mutual mass acceleration. So the one thing that a black hole is is where the dielectric is overthrown magnetism's ability to keep that huge mass within the visible universe. So you have something that is A, and human beings can't actually process this because we have no analog in our visible universe that we grew up in, meaning this universe here on Earth. Everything that has uh, mass also has magnitude. You see, this is three inches by two inches, and great. That's the only thing human beings know. But from the premise of field theory, this is not only accurate, it is hyper hyper-logical. It's so hyper-logical, it uh, should have smacked human beings in the face a, God knows how many decades ago. But astronomers are not field theory. They don't know anything about field theory. But I mean, defining what a black hole is is very simple. Something that's super massive that has no magnitude. In other words, the dielectric acceleration is so incredibly high that magnetism cannot keep that mass within the visible universe. Okay, this would be a uh, disproportionate imbalance between the arm wrestler, one being magnetism, and the other one being dielectric. This is the conjugate geometry of force and motion, inertia and acceleration, that defines the entire universe. In normal mass and matter, of course, there is a disparity. Um, in the case of, like, unstable elements, they, they emit radiation. So there is a, a disparity between magnetism and the dielectric. They are constantly emitting things or they're very unstable. They want to fly apart. But what actually defines a black hole is incredibly simple. It's that dielectric has overthrown completely and utterly magnetism's ability to keep that supermass within the visible universe. It is literally that simple. And... Uh, this is one of actually countless many reasons, including a true scientific method and retroduction, which is not used by any astronomer or modern uh, scientist, as the ancient Platonists and Pythagoreans. You know, even though their technology wasn't that great, the, the minds and the intellects of uh, Aristotle and Plato and the Pythagoreans and the Neoplatonists is far, far better than anybody alive today. There is an ancient lost uh, thinking methodology called retroduction and a few other things, but anyway. That actually is what a black hole is. Of course, we shouldn't call it a black hole. I was trying to think about what should a black hole actually be called. It should be called a dielectric overthrow phenomena or a, a, super, a supermassive dielectric uh, phenomena. And of course, that doesn't sound very sexy. A uh, black hole sounds a lot sexier, but a black hole is not a hole. Duh. But this is what... This is why... Einstein was wrong about black holes. This is why all these idiot scientists pontificating of black holes, they have their head up their ass. You know, they are, some of them are brilliant mathematicians and they have PhDs, great. Astro yeah, but when they're looking at these uh, astronomical phenomena, they don't realize that they, none of these people are hardcore rooted in, you know, the, the field theory of Tesla, Faraday. Because all this galactic phenomena is fucking dielectric, magnet, magnetic, and electrical.
Specifically, it is, and of course, gravity does not exist at all. I'm not saying the phenomena of gravity doesn't exist. I'm saying gravity as autonomous field, uh, field phenom phenomena absolutely does not exist. Hence, ergo, gravity itself does not exist. Um, but the phenomena, of course, does exist. The same thing the idiot human beings call gravity is absolutely no different than what the other idiots call magnetic attraction. There's no such thing as magnetic attraction. There's no such thing as gravity. These two are absolutely inextractably uh, uh, in uh, in one and the same thing. Uh, that's a dielectric acceleration. The only difference or nuance is uh, point source and incoherent uh, mutual mass acceleration, i.e. gravity. But that is what a black hole is. It is a supermass where the dielectric has overthrown magnetism's ability to have a magnitude within the visible universe. Hence, it becomes a supermass with no Cartesian reality. It has, it has no ability to be manifest because manifestation equals magnetism. Mass, I mean, excuse me, not mass, but magnitude, manifestation, and a Cartesian reality are all equal to one thing, magnetism. And if the dielectric overthrows magnetism, then it does not exist in this visible universe, even though its effects, of course, are felt. You know, stars that are super, uh, super incredibly fast spinning around, you know, this non-entity that they call a supermassive black hole. So this is explaining a supermassive black hole in simplex, and that's exactly what one is. But you actually have to have wisdom and brains and the ability to see the forest for the trees to come to that conclusion. And it's not only logical, it's hyperlogical. That's the only way a black hole could be defined because that's exactly what one is. But none of these idiot astronomers, they're sitting here back and forth trying to debate whether you could fly into one or what. Singularity, it's not a singularity. A singularity is still Cartesian. It's not a singularity at all. They keep defining a black hole in terms of uh, Cartesian phenomena and magnitude. And of course, it's an, it's an anti-magnitude. But it's still supermassive, and therefore it has influences of other things around it, but it has no magnitude. Human beings can't wrap their mind around this. But uh, anyway, I hope you like these videos. If you do, you can always click the link below and drop a donation, because well, you can tell me you jump off a cliff. Whatever makes you happy. Either way is perfectly fine. Thank you. Lux Everitas.